Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Herp Monday number 43. We have a big one for you today. Today's Herp is one of the largest of its kind in the world. In fact, it's not one of. It is the largest one of its kind in the world. This thing is big, protected, um, and in trouble. Today we are going to be talking about the Ham. The Goliath Frog. Sorry that wasn't the best intro, but hey, we're here now. So the Goliath Frog, or scientific name Conrawa Goliath, in Conrawa Goliath, it is part of the family Conrawidae. Um, there are multiple species in this family, um, or in this genus, but the family is only represented by this one genus. Um, like seven or eight species in this family it is the family of slippery and giant frogs in fact the common name of another common name of the goliath frog is the slippery giant frog. um so it's not found in an incredibly large area um it's found in the last 200 kilometers or 120 miles of the sanaga basin um in cameroon and in the last 50 kilometers or 31 miles of the Benito River Basin in Equatorial Guinea. So mid-Africa and the basically the final um, 160 square miles of river right in that area. So you think about it, that's not a very large area. Um, it is a tropical rainforest and these things are found in these uh, rainforests fast flowing rivers with sandy bottoms they really like actually being uh they really like being near waterfalls actually um but that that's not a really large area especially when you think about global and how old these frogs are um just something interesting to note these goliath frogs have essentially remained unchanged for 250 meaning that goliath frogs have essentially remained unchanged since before the dinosaur. I'm um, just a real interesting, interesting fact about it. Um, in a sample of 15 individuals, and it seems to hold true for the rest of the species, um, the weights of these, and we're going to talk about the size, uh, the weights of these frogs ranged about 600 to 3,250 grams, which is 1.3 to 7.2 pounds. So, let's say a middle, an average frog, is going to weigh about four and a half pounds, maybe even five pounds. That is a large, large frog. And the snout vent leaks, which are from the nose to the bottom of the pelvis, that does not include the legs, were between 17 and 32 centimeters. It's between seven and 13 inches. Remember, that's just the head to the back, not including the legs. Um, we have a picture here. You can see this picture of these two children holding this frog. This kid is holding it basically at mouth height, and it's almost stretching down to his ankle. Um, really, really big frog. And here you can see their tadpole as well, one of the uh, late-stage tadpole. Um, big tadpole, just a d enormous frog. Um, which is why I thought it'd be cool about to talk about the largest frog in the entire world. Um, something else about their size, you look at their eyes, they don't have small eyes, um, but you might be a little lost. Their eyes are actually nearly two and a half centimeters or one inch in diameter. So one inch wide eyes, really big. Um, now, something interesting to note about these is that Goliath eggs the goliath frog eggs and tadpoles um, when they're very young are about the same size as other frogs despite how long they get as an adult or even as a late stage tadpole like this one so what's happening is that these eggs are being laid they're the same size the female just lays a bunch of them those tadpoles are just really small and they just grow within the first 75 to 90 days they're getting that size that's where most of the growth actually um so just really interesting in the fact that in terms of size 
egg, Goliath frog eggs and regular frog eggs, like a regular bullfrog, can't actually tell the difference. Even after they hatch, they just grow so much faster, so much larger. Especially when they're at the adults. Um, as you can tell from the pictures, their coloration is not really anything to be excited about. You got this kind of dark green black back. It's got a kind of a sandy, sandpapery looking skin. It's belly and the underside of its legs are going to have this yellow coloration wide head looking conical um big thick legs and something about those legs is um those legs are just so big and massive that they allow the goliath frog to jump a really long distance um up to three meters which is about 10 feet in a single bound um so these things can definitely cover the area with these enormous legs um but it's just kind of your big beefy bullfrog um you know it's not there's not really coloration to them um we do have some interesting facts don't don't get me wrong but it's more just the size of this individual is you're probably most in oh, well except for one thing that I um actually here's another interesting fact the goliath frog actually doesn't have a vocal stack so you know how frogs call um you see the the videos of them blowing up this air bag this vocal sack um goliath frogs actually don't have that um so obviously they don't produce a mating call instead of sucking the air into vocal sacks and then blowing it out to make calls the live frogs actually hold the mouth open and make a really loud long whistling noise so they're actually whistling instead of, you know, reverberating through the vocals. Um, yeah, just super, super interesting. Um, in terms of where they lay their eggs after they, the males do attract the females with their whistles, um, no. <laughs> um, the egg masses are actually attached to vegetation. And there are three main nest types. All of them are sort of a half moon shape, and they're located either in or very close to the river. Um, and we'll get kind of into that. In the first one, they clear a section in a river pool. Um, so they just take an existing pool and kind of clear out a little section. In the second, they expand an already existing pool and then dam it off from the river. And then in the third one, they actually dig a pool roughly about one meter, three feet wide and 10 centimeters so about four inches so they in the third one they're actually digging a pool and that actually seems to be the most common one um so the in in the process of that they're moving some of these large stones uh big rocks out of the way in the process um some people believe that's actually what might actually that partially explains why the goliath frogs are actually so large is because the larger frogs can are more successful at making a bigger uh, nest by moving those heavy rocks out of the way I don't hold true to that it might have something to do with it but there is no denying that uh, the bigger frog you are the bigger of a frog that you are the um, bigger rocks you can and something else that's interesting to note about this is in the Goliath frog males are actually bigger than female um, which is usually it's the other way around and this is why there is probably some truth to that explanation is that it seems like the males are the ones who construct the nesting place and females just lay their eggs so there might be some truth to that um there doesn't seem to be any sort of parental um parental activities going on they're not guarding the nests or anything like that but maybe you know it's just really hard to know there's not a lot known about the reproductive efforts of goliath frogs um in terms of how long they live they seem to live between 15 and 20 years um they have been known to live up to 21 years in captivity um goliath frogs used to be available on the pet trade um but it is preyed upon by snakes crocodiles monitors but it's really heavily hunted by humans um which is what these children were holding 
um, it's really valued as a food source for people in that area. And, I mean, that is a pretty significant chunk of meat um, for you know that area. They're fairly easy to catch. You know, you're just talking about a frog. So, you know, you can't really blame them. Um, in fact, that is their primary th threat. Um, they do need clean rivers, but in that area, there's not as much deforestation or um, urbanization going on. So they seem to be relatively safe from that aspect, but they do have that issue of um, being overhunted and being harvested for the pet trade. In fact, Equatorial Guinea, I believe, said that they would only allow 300 um, individuals caught for pet trade. Um, and I seem to have some that say that you can find them for about 200 bucks. Some websites say they sell Goliath frogs for 200 bucks, but I don't know if it's actually Goliath frogs or if they're getting legally. So, you know, I'd probably stay away from this frog if you're looking to get in the frog trade. Now, um, in terms of the interesting fact that we're going to end the video on, their diet. Um, so adult goliath frogs, they all feed on spiders, insects, you know, dragonflies, locusts. They'll eat fish, they'll eat other frogs, salamanders, newts. Um, but they'll actually also eat mollusks, crabs, crustaceans, baby turtles, young snakes. Um, in fact, even a bat was reportedly found in a goliath frog's stomach. Um, so they'll basically eat anything that they can when they're adult. But the interesting fact um, that I found is that Goliath frog tadpoles are herbivorous, which that's not uncommon. Um, bullfrogs have some tadpoles that are herbivorous, some that are carnivorous, but Goliath tadpoles are herbivorous, but they only feed on a single aquatic plant species, um, Dicraea uh, warmingii. Uh, is how you pronounce that. It is part of the family uh, Podostemaceae or Podostemaceae. Um, and those are only found in waterfalls and rapids in that, which actually might explain why they have such a limited and restricted range. It's not the fact that they can't go over to these other rivers or that they would be hard to take from there, that the water quality is not good. It's just that that single aquatic plant um, really seems to restrict those range because it does not seem that the tadpoles seem to survive on anything but that aquatic plant. Which is that to me was the most interesting fact about this interesting frog. Um, you know, just simple fact that it can have, it can eat anything as an adult, but when it's a tadpole it can only eat one single. But thank you guys so much again. I really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. If I don't Please be safe. Have a great day. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you do. I'd really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. Hopefully you're enjoying the Fish Fridays. I know I am. Once again, take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones.